Is Optic will get to 250. Tain and Mines, we'll see. We'll see uh, what club they join, <laughs> if one at all. Maybe something crazy happens, of course. You never want to uh, sell up. I like the pink, though. The pink is fresh. I like that a lot. That's hopefully going to lead to great gameplay. But Nimble, Nimble has been solid. Uh, we saw him in a series last night and today where he's been performing well individually. Can the team put it together here against Optic Gaming? It is not going to be easy. That pink really is kind of weird. It is I love it. it I love it. It stands different. out. Hey, it looks good. <laughs> it at least nice. contrasting. So that's the, the hard-hitting analysis we have off the break. The only love thing it. notable was like no one wanted to get inside the hill off there. Right? Everybody's worried about nades and getting wall thing. And by the way, Optic Gaming in control of the hill. Skump is uh, pretending he has an AR in his hands with that PPSH, but he's going to move inside the hill as well or push up the lane. But uh, complete control so far in the restaurant hill. No Optic Gaming does not have the spawns, but the question is, can they break on uh, Methods? He's the guy to watch. He's going to be coming to the so he's going to be ready for him, but just like that, Methods wins the gunfight. Nice one on one victory, which will open up back ammo for them to start to get set up. Krim will get picked, though, as he tries to get into Granny's. Damage has a lot more work to do, though. Multiple players here. He's going to get shot in the back as he tries to watch the flank. Now the pressure comes to Swift to Zorn. He gets picked immediately. Things falling apart almost instantaneously, instantaneously here for Chain and Mines. As now they're going to be spawning field, having to flood through the front. But they are still racking up time, and the reinforcements do get here in time. Yeah, Optic Gaming put all the pressure on the spawns, but the spawns is only half the battle. Now you got to get inside the hill, and you can see, well, Tainted Mines, they can't just flood from one side, but it's not easy to do. Damage is going to fall. So if he tried to give the opening and picked up the two-piece, but it would have taken another two-piece, and there you see the priority. Get the spawns, then you only have to just even trade on gunfights, and you will come out on top. Octane gets picked at the back box, but Crim6 there for the trade. And the rest of this time, definitely going to be going to Optic as they open up a lead now in transition. We'll try to find a gap in the defense here from Tana Mines as they get ready for our next hard point at parking lot. So far, Nimble doing a good job just being a nuisance here. Crim6 can't finish him. Methods, he actually kills Methods too. If Nimble's able to somehow pick up Crim in this spot, okay. So Nimble will fall. But it got scary there for a second if he was able to you know, kind of bait in the team kill and then also find Crim. This is actually like best case scenario for Tana Mines as well, because that's just going to slow them down profusely. And they got players that are watching the back. You got Octane working with Stump, but Swifty's back here. And at the very least, just needs to slow him down, but he's not going to do it too well. Only gets a nade out, and you see Methods going on the pinch. This is going to force Tana Mines to spawn out. Damage is just going to get naded. And just like that, Optic Gaming breaks two hills in a row. Relatively close game. So Tana Mines, I think best case scenario here. They don't necessarily need to like re-break the hill. Just get him out of the hill for like 10 seconds. That's all you got to do. Get him out. Contest, do what you can here is make sure Optic can't open up much more of a lead. There's a big one on one going down for a moment at least, and Octane's gonna lose that. So damage gets in for a couple of seconds, and he's still here contesting. This is exactly what you said they needed to do. They almost do exactly that. Probably earn a couple of points and can test for 10 seconds or so. Yeah, not a bad spot at all, but the problem is Methods. He's already working towards the new spawns, trying to be a nuisance. He does get cleaned up, and now Tainted Mines actually has a, a pre-made pinch sort of set up on the hill because he got the player in back barn that's Nimble. By Swift is enough time to come over and get the help. Nimble does get taken down, but now Tainted Mines knows all the pressure is going to be coming in from one side, and, well, they're winning all the gunfights now as well. Unfortunately for them, they gave up mid-map, so they're going to be out of the hill for just a moment, but uh, about about as good as it gets huh? on lookout posts for the moment. They're doing their best to keep Opti Gaming at bay, but the gunfights start to get traded back and forth, and it does look like Opti Gaming, three hills in a row now, uh, will be strong enough to break through on lookout post. They get in. Still a lot of time they can rack up here, but that's going to be the story this far. Like, Tatum Mines could be in this game or even have a lead if they could just hold any of these early setups that they've gotten. I mean, Optic has let them get set up. It's just their ability to break on in behind the slang prowess you have on this squad has been the problem. Can Tainamides punish Optic with one of these early setups is a question. Once again, Tainamides in first. They win the first fight there as Methods gets picked by the nade. The collapse now going to come in. Octane worried about the player at top window. So far, so good for Tainted Mines, but usually where they've, they've struggled is once it gets about halfway through the hard point, Optic gaming breakthrough. Well, Tainted Mines is in. Hey, they're winning all the gunfights. Optic Gaming is all going to have to push from the exact same side. And Nibble, he's trying to rack up a little bit of a streak. He's on two. He's going to be the front line man. And Octane, it looks like he's just going to get the wall bang. Optic Gaming can flood in. So if he's the last one alive, and yes, he does get one, but it's not going to be enough. And just like that, Optic Gaming pushes through. But we have seen the situation before where Tainted Mines, they at least have the spawns for the next hill. Even if they lose Restaurant, they got to not lose them. Last time it came down to that 1v1 between Methods and Swift, he kind of opened up the hill. And this time, it's Nimble's responsibility to watch it. We'll see if Tana Mons can hold on. 
Swifty and Nimble going to be crucial here. Two players kind of spawning out in a split. You already see Methods, I think, ready to deal with that. He's actually going to go ahead and push. He's going to get caught by Swifty. Nimble, next man up. See some shots come in. Trying to play both sides of ammo here, and he'll get cut down by Crim6 via the headshot in the back. So far, still so good from Tandem Mines. They have them spawning out deep, all the way kind of by that B-bomb site, as they have to rotate over. It's a it's a big hike here. So in the opening 15 or so seconds, Optic Gaming hasn't been able to put any pressure on the hard point yet. Repositioning out, out of the hard point for a moment is damaged as he at least gets a kill in the back. Kane continues, continues to do it, but this is around that mark where Optic usually break in right around 30 or so seconds. And they put a lot of pressure on that ammo side of things just to consistently force Tainted Mind. Uh, Tainted Mind spawns out. Uh, the question is, is it going to be enough? They did give up quite a bit of time, and of course that 2-3 to three rotation is the most important thing on St. Marie. So, yes, Optic, they do have a sizable lead, and they've broken on the third hill once before. And I think we're going to see the same thing. We're just They're going to run up that far left lane. They're going to consistently put the pressure on the back end again. They're just prioritizing spawns pretty heavily on both the second and the third hill. Crim6 is going to be the guy that's doing it once again. You can see Tainted Mines is trying to hunt him down. But just because Tainted Mines even had pressure by where Crim6 is, that means anyone from Optic Gaming that dies, they spawn up like back ammo. So even though Crim6 is here, it's not quite the anchor, but it clears up Swifty. Now Optic has the good spawn, which means number five spawns out of by ammo. The big thing right now, you can survive this. You can stay in games if you're Tainted Mines. If you're getting early setups and you know, you're getting broken about halfway through, you can still stick around for a clutch. The problem is if Optic Gaming at some point during this starts to get some streaks. Because in that method, instead of breaking in halfway through the hard point, suddenly you're breaking in the opening push behind a streak. And that's when the lead will really blow up. But Tainted Mines has absolutely kept this close. Once again, the scrap time, or the second half of the hard point going to Optic Gaming. But no one's been able to pick up any kind of streaks. No one really going off right now. I mean, Crim's leading the way. Scump's right there with him as 20 and 14 and 19 and 13, respectively. But when can Optic Gaming chain maybe the final hard point time into, uh, you know, an early break? Yeah, I think that's when the game ends. Unless, they, honestly, they'll still win if they keep this method. It's going to take a little longer. I, I was going to say an early <laughs> break or just an early hold. Like They've been fighting for spawns constantly. Like And again, things have been working out clearly, but they haven't really had the opportunity to get a full setup. It literally seems like it's a testing ground of like, let's give Tane and mine spawns and see if we can work on our breaks. Like, that's I, that's not what's happening, but it just kind of seems that way. But you got Scump inside, the pressure opted coming in the back. and. I don't know, Tainted Mines in an okay spot, but they really need to break through on here. Nimble's going to be a key guy. And no, I, I think I think you're right, though, in a sense of if this were Optic playing against a team, like let's say in Division A, like a Red Reserve or an EG, who's like really good at getting early setups and holding him, they'd be in a world of trouble right now, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're playing super structured, but they are taking a lot of times to like, go for those spawns. But we'll see. I, I mean, again, against Tainted Mines, you got the 70-point lead. You're going into Restaurant Hill next. Based on what we've seen before, it should be a pretty comfortable win. But... Maybe Tane and Mines can pull off a miracle, but with Octane up top, it's going to be difficult to do. Nimble, though, is going to be there to shut him down. One more break. Might be able to do it. Once again, red controlled early here by Tainted Mines. Krim trying to challenge the top window there. Not an easy gunfight to take, but Scump and Company on the front side. You see four players lighting up there, all pink on the kill feed for Tainted Mines. They get the clear, and they hold the setup again. And they just keep sticking around, right? Optic has not been able to bury them in this game. Still a comfortable lead, but Tandem Mines do not want to go away. Krim6 going huge as well. Picks up two on the flank, and yes, he gets taken down. And, well, I would have said that's the opportunity for Optic to flood in the front, but they lost all the gunfights on the front line, so Krim6's flank uh, is essentially worthless. Now, though, Skump's going to go play for next spawns, but either way, this has been a near full 60 for Tandem Mines, and if they even hold on at the end here, they will have, what, their third opportunity to lock down this second hill. But, yeah, Skump's is in the back, so uh, the only opportunity Tandem Mines had, it comes down to another 1v1, and Skump should just win this one easily. He wins it, but Optic did spawn out at third, so they do have to rotate across the map. Scum's going to be in trouble till the help comes in. Krim now here to help. Wins that first gunfight and the streak. And I mentioned earlier, once they get those, is maybe when they're able to finally break into a hard point early. But Swifty earned one on the other side. He also has an artillery to go with this chance. And 30 points down, Tainted Mines once again in control of early time and winery. But remember, Optic has managed to get through eventually in each hard point, but both times they got ammo control early. This time they don't.
And Tatum might have a lead change here in a couple of seconds, Chance. And he's got the artillery. Yep. They have all the time in the world to push out. Optic Gaming doesn't even want this hill anymore. There's no sense in even taking these gunfights. They need the full setup, but the artillery is there. So if Swift uses it correctly, which, I don't know, it, it depends on how the gunfights go. If they lose these on their first attempt to break, you put it right on top of the hill. But if you manage in these next couple seconds to get a couple down, you could use it offensively and you just win the game. This might be the first hard point we see Optic set up at first as they've been enjoying the breaks in the scrap time. Now they have the early setup, but the problem is you got a streak. Artillery is going to come in. Method should be cleared out of the hard point momentarily, unless he's able to tuck back into a corner and somehow survive this. Finally, he will drop. Three are going to be down. They're still spawning safe. There wasn't enough pressure on the front line there from Tata Mines to spawn him out. And Skump doing what he can mid-street. Skump, though, will finally fall. Tata Mines only need 19 more points here. One just ran up the front. Nimble just ran up the front and got inside. Swifty's able to put a couple shots in as well. No one's getting time at the hard point. But as Swifty drops, finally, a bit of control now for Optic Gaming. They can win it here, but still some streaks on Tainted Mines. Yeah, so the question is, they're going to get to what? 233, but a player is going to be able to funnel right in the back. So absolutely, they can win. Tainted Mines has to go, and Optic Gaming, they have a lot of options. They could just, well, win the gunfight to rotate to next. Damn, just coming to the back. He's going to have to pick up like two. The pinch is in. A player's going mid-cut. Two in the front. They all go down. The four-man wipe. Optic, they let it get interesting, but they close it down in the end. Uh, to take a not so comfortable win uh, against Tainted Mines. Yeah, I mean, Optic got up early. They were up 50, 60 points early in the game, and then they seemed content with let them set up, we're eventually going to break in. Let them set up, we're eventually going to break in. They just held that lead throughout the course of the game until it got a little scary at the end. I mean, those every single hill, except for that very last one, I think Optic lost the rotation to. Like, literally every single time, and uh, it just took, what, that one good restaurant hold for them to get streaks. Uh, and then the one time that Optic didn't focus on ammo, they just flooded in the front, then they just stopped winning gunfights. Yeah, it was it was close. It was close, but honestly, you just need to get the victory. And Optic are able to take it despite uh, maybe not the prettiest of hard points. And Tana Mines, they play them tough. I mean, I, I thought they actually looked a little bit more disciplined on their side for most of the game. At least we were talking about early rotations and getting in control. But um, as we move through this series, the question is going to be. Can Tate in mind steal one of these games or will it be a 3L? I believe, though, before the series actually started, Jess was able to talk with Scump from Optic Gaming. Curious to hear his thoughts. Yep, Maven, that is right. I did, in fact, talk with Scump. And going into the series, he said that they were feeling pretty good, pretty confident going up against Tainted Mines. But he did add that Tainted Mines are kind of like a question mark of a team because Optic hasn't really gotten too much of a chance to play versus them. So he said, well, we might see some things that we haven't really seen out of other teams yet. But overall, uh, we just had some really good scrims versus Rise. So we're feeling pretty good, feeling pretty confident. So for now, back on over to the casters. Thank you, Jess. We'll see if the confidence, uh, I mean, they have a lot to be confident about. Um, you, you're talking about coming into Division B. At first, it was like, what are we going to get from Optic? We expect them to be good. Then you hear um, Clayster talking about the fact they might be the best team in the game. You hear Priestess say that he thinks they can top the division. Uh, there's another pro player I saw kind of pop up in an article. Um, a lot of people seem to quickly get faith behind this team to be one of the best. Uh, well, we kind of expected that. But once they start actually scrimming and dominating some people, it started to pop up more and more amongst the pros. At the same time, though, like maybe they're going like completely next level. They're hyping Optic up. So once they face like a top team and maybe there's like a crack <laughs> in the armor, then they're like, maybe we aren't that good. And then they collapse. But no, I, more than likely, they well, should be a perfectly fine team. There's no next level mental games going on. <laughs> you never know. I'm excited for that. Uh, the final match of Thursday. Uh, tomorrow, yes. I believe it'll be what? Optic. LG. Uh, LG to close it out. Um, should be should be an incredible, incredible matchup. It should be. This one, though, you never know. Honestly, with the way map number one out uh, came out, uh, it might be a better series than we previously expected. Uh, if you think about the success Tainted Minds has had in the league so far, granted, they've only played two series, but they've played uh, like a Valkyrie S&D. They played it. I know this is a different map, but a Valkyrie S&D, they played against Mind Freak. They beat him 6-1. So they've had a little bit of success in Search and Destroy. They beat uh, whoever they played day one. I can't even remember at this point. Was it LG they played? Whoever it was, they beat him on a CTF. Or no, definitely wasn't LG then. Beat him on a CTF like 4-1. So they've shown Mind success. Freak. Mind Freak. Mind Freak. Was it Mind Freak that beat the CTF as well? Yeah, I believe, right? Oh, oh yeah, I did go to game five. I thought, I, thought they, they, I thought they beat Mind Freak 5-0. Oh, they played earlier today. Okay, well, whatever it's been, they've shown success in the next two game modes. It's a hard point. I was here yesterday and I slept most of the day. So honestly, taking anything I say about yesterday, not a good idea. Yeah, probably shouldn't be. Asked. No, no, no. <laughs> when you asked me the question, I was like, <laughs> yeah. good one, Chance. Look, man, I'm trying to find a sell for Tainted Minds for them to have, like, an opportunity to win. I, You know, you could say that the hard point was close, but that's it's part of our it. job. It's part of our job, making the Isn't series entertaining, interesting, a battle 
of one of the best from APAC versus one of the best in North America clashing in Call of Duty World War II at the Call of Duty World League in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, here you go. Here's the cell for this map. So the same way S and D spawns got like moved. And like it wasn't even in the patch notes, so I have no idea how that's a thing. Is that confirmed? Oh, I wasn't sure if that was confirmed. Well, it, confirmed. You can watch it on defense. You just yeah, you spawn farther back. You used to spawn like that's in between. Yeah, it yeah, got yeah. moved back into the left, which you know five ten feet, which doesn't sound huge, but no, like it is, it is. It changed it, how the game played. Uh, Drastically. I was going to say, it, it yeah. changes timings. It changes, like, what you need to do over on the B site. So, uh, again, if you want to talk about opportunities for Tainted Minds to win, you'll take any little bit of help you can get. And, and maybe it's just a small spawn adjustment. But uh, we do see early on, Octane walks up, gets one pretty much free kill, and he's looking for more. He's got help rotating over as well. He sees stay alive till Skump's, Skump gets in position and Krim gets in position in window to help him out. There's the nade. And the assist comes through for him. Great job, really, on the communication and play by Octane there. And a push from Tana Mines has just evaporated. Bait and switch coming in. Octane falls for Skump to get the kill. Damage is the last one alive. He's waiting to catch Skump off guard, which, well, seems to be the case, but the reaction time for Skump, he's like, oh, nope, not going this way. Let me double back in. As soon as you get that information, damage is just trapped. Skump's going to have all the help in the world. The flank's going to come in. And just like that, clean round from Optic that Pretty much just came off the first blood from Octane. This is actually the the mode that I was very much curious to see how it would change for Optic. I mean, just thinking historically over that team, you know, it's what, three plus years. S and D was never really their specialty. That is where they would struggle. That is where they, they were still good, but it was their worst. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. When when you have a seventy to eighty percent win rate in the other two modes and that's around forty to fifty, yeah, it, it certainly can be. And that what yesterday what didn't they have like a six oh six one? I think, I, was yeah, I, think was I was talking to Joe. He's like, their search looked really solid. So yeah. you got to think, if they improve there uh, dr uh, dramatically, that's <laughs> that's a big win. Well, I mean, you think even just like straight player to player, like Karma to Methods. Methods has been good, but maybe not too much better than Karma and SD, so relatively comparable. But Octane this year has definitely been better than Formula and SD. Octane has just been like disturbingly good, even when he's baiting for his teammates. But Optic should, uh, again, be perfectly fine in the game mode. Here we find ourselves in a 2v2. B site's been cleared out. They do have the bomb. Uh, and Tainted Mines, it looks like they're just trying to pinch opt again. So they're going to give up the plant unless Nimble goes for the challenge. He might actually get really good timing on the player. He needs to get there before he pops up behind the box. He gets him right before Octane can get in position to watch the flank. And it falls apart quickly. Nice two-on-two -two victory there from Tainted Mines. And it works out great. He's there a second, second and a half later. Octane's behind the box set up and he gets beamed. And, and here's some bad stuff from Opti Gaming. If you're in that 2v2 and you have sight control, there's three places they can come in from. Where the player that was watching over him, whoever it was, you can watch top mid and you can watch like the original like defense spawn at the exact same time. So you just have to plant to not get killed from ammo. That's the only place you have to plant for. He plants not in that spot, so he gets picked off. If they pick a better plant spot, they should be able to win that round. Like if you get control of B, you should be able to win, and they don't know where to plant. Well, doesn't work out for him, and Tainted Minds take advantage. Now trying to flood into this B site. Krem6, late to get in, gets caught with a grenade. Uh, Beth is at least able to peek in late and find one, but will drop almost immediately afterwards. So Octane and Skump, what might be a, a new incredible duo in the making, uh, is going to fall almost immediately. <laughs> Completely different round than the last time around, but you get control of the B site, you get bombed down, you win the round. It's not too complicated after that. Uh, Methods, the spot he had, like, honestly, it's impressive that he gets one kill at all, because that's just like you just come around the corner and pre fire, but he was getting shot by like at least two people. But solid round, solid round all, all the way for Tana Mines. Tana Mines now up in the game, too. Optic Gaming thinking over this next round. Just taking a look through some of the class setups on the Tainted Mind side. Damage peeking across the top window, and it's going to be a quick A hit coming out from Optic Gaming. Methods should see them on the cross. It, oh, God, he is finally able to connect. Gets both. Nice job, nice position for him to deal with that early push through mid and what would have been a very early flank if he doesn't find both those kills. Now it's going to be Swift Azores in a 1v4, so this one's going to be over. He wins the first gunfight, should get cleaned up. What I will say... I think he got three there, I think, right? Yeah, he does get three. 
one thing I'll say about Tainted Mines, and I've only watched them play like three maps of S&D, so take it with a grain of salt, but the way they play Search, they don't play correctly, but they don't necessarily play wrong. They'll do some aggressive stuff and not sit there and take the time to watch every single corner, watch every single position. They'll make a play call and they'll just commit. If they want to send two through mid to go on the flank, sometimes they just go for the blind counter, and sometimes it pays off. Like on Valkyrie, they did it against Mind Freak, where sometimes they just blind countered and it goes to perfection, but obviously if Methods is in the one spot that they're not prepared for, he picks up too. I said uh, I said it on Hot Mike when talking. We were talking to SD with some of the guys. I made a comment like, sometimes it's not as much the strategy as just having one vocal leader who makes a call and everybody does it. And Felly, Felony actually tweeted me. He's like, I agree with you. <laughs> he's like, sometimes just being on the same page, somebody makes a call and you go. Maybe it's not the smartest thing all the time. It can still certainly work. It's also some freaky stuff Nimble's doing that I guess we can talk about later, but they got control of the B site. They have three people alive. If history repeats itself, they should just win, but actually the player comes up top. Swift is going to fall because Method's win the gunfight, and all of a sudden it's going to be damage in uh, a body bag because he gets cleaned up as well. And Method's going off these past two rounds. He had three in both of these rounds. And he's got streaks. Exactly. The streak going to come through as well. Methods having a great performance here. And of course, I, I think got to give credit to Scump on that. He's the player up top. For whatever reason, Tainted Minds, they like lay down on the other side of Sandbags where they can get killed from up top before they had control of it. So, I mean, literally, I, maybe it was a bullet that Scump got off. Like, he was very close to just getting killed. But he does get traded, and then Methods wins a tough gunfight. But, yeah, a solid retake for Optic. Uh, I said it's difficult to do, but they find success, and they get streaks off the back. Now, if they get the bomb down, it's a free win for any number of reasons. Let's see if Methods can find more kills here on this sixth streak. Here comes the buy bomb. He's going to go ahead and call that end. You can see the mini-map three players stacked in around red. Not going to find anything with that. We'll be able to give his team some information, though, at least. But now they know nothing's near that A side at all. I, but it, so they've done two things so far where, like, it makes sense, but not in the right situation. If you're calling in a glide bomb, the best part about having a glide bomb is you clear out the bomb site to go plant. But none of them went into the bomb site, and then the guy with the bomb has got calling in streaks. So they basically oh. said, let's not get any map control. Let's use a glide bomb, still not get any map control, get zero information, and then let's all die. Yeah. I mean, we have what, all four were mountain? Yeah. So, I mean, again, I guess you could say a good counter shot by yeah, two yeah, lines, yeah, yeah. but at the same time, if you're calling the glide bomb, you got to at least do get something control. behind yeah, it. Yeah, you do something. Uh, and again, they make no commitment, get no control, and they don't get the round, and there's one it's streak burn. Methods doesn't get the round. Is this rest. the cool thing to do again? I remember, like, when I was in high school 40 years ago, it was cool to, like, have frosted tips and make your hair blonde. Is that is that in again with the kids? I, is Australia 40 years behind? Honestly, like the wave? Might be. I, I have no they idea. Could be. I actually think they are a bit behind uh, cultural shifts and uh, clothing and stuff like that. I just made that up, too. Are all four of the players awesome? Isn't there one Kiwi on the team? I think there's one Kiwi on their team. I don't know if he's like the Frosted Tips player, I but I think there's one Kiwi. I think I, it's I wish I had sword? tips to Frost. I'll tell you what. If Tana Mines wins this series, you have to get your tips Frosted chance. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tried. It's not how that works. <laughs> I tried. Three on two now for Optic Gaming. Leave it to Nimble now, and Tana Mines have to try and clutch here. 50 seconds on the clock to work with. Methods in the top window as he continues a reign of terror on St. Marie, and it's a 4-3 advantage for Optic Gaming. I'm really not even sure what happened. I, I saw Crim6 was just kind of like walking down mid-street. He just gets killed. I went on a Frosted yeah, Tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, really, that really happened, and I was you. like, well, Tana Mines has the advantage, and then I started thinking about Frosted I tips can't stop. Look going. at Methods. I can't stop picturing not with his tips Frosted. Well, we're in America, so we're ahead of the game, right? Frosted yes, Tips. Well, this gu well Gunless just went yeah, Oh, in. Gunless did, too. Well, that's not, no, that's not Frosted Tips. That's Frosted Hair. Oh, that's true. That's, that's Frosted Hair. hair. Okay. That, that might be his. Well, that's not his natural hair color. Never mind. Yeah. Dude, one of them's a Kiwi, I'm telling you. You guys with hair get to do cool stuff. Nimble. Wow. Aggressive bottom red. Almost pays for it. Some shots come in, but he's able to survive. Methods, quick flank around. Into red. Will Nimble be ready for it? Ready and waiting. Methods going to get dropped. First blood. Two tainted mines. Skump gets some nice shots in the Nimble. He's going to have to back out of there. You see, Octane was actually trying to pick him from the top line in that situation, but Nimble's able to stay alive. Now Crim6 and Skump. They're going for the bait and switch. You can wall bang this spot as well. You see Crim6 is going to be going for it. Skump's going to push in, and nice just like that, the bait and switch pays off. Good teamwork, and Swifty is going to get caught throwing a nade. I know Octane does not have a sniper. Sometimes it just seems that way, but Swift is in a 1v3, and he's assuredly just going to lose because what can you really do?
That was a 2v3. Sorry, what the hell? Okay, now it's 1v3. There we go. Sweet. Swift to Zord, now in the 1v3. Trying to take this gunfight earlier. Not an easy one. Skump punishes his optic gaming, now cruising up 5-3. Can't believe that was a 2v3. I can't count. Maybe I thought Nimble died when he's on the stairs I, by, like, I think, or something. I think like. my stupid-ass tangent just fried your brain. Frosted tips. You've been a little bit out of it since I brought that up. It's all right, Chance. It's okay. I mean, you grew up with, like, NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, right? I did. Those I did. were, like, your best friends or something? Yep. Same age? So I actually I had Frosted Tips at one point. If I remember, I, oh. I will find a photo of it. Yeah, just for one, just for, like, a couple months. Dude, you could Frosted Tips your beard. Okay. That, um, I don't hate that, Chance. <laughs> I don't hate that. <laughs> Everyone else would. The cop <laughs> certainly would. You'd get arrested for walking down the street. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, this S&D has gotten out of our hands. One more round. Eat it for Optic Gaming. And then we can go to a commercial break, and I can reset my brain. Kerm six, nice shots there. Nade kill as well. Four on two. Swifty and Swift Azor eliminated. Optic Gaming take over late in that game, too, and win at 6-3. Well, that's a game. That is certainly a game. Good stuff to Optic Gaming. We're concerned about maybe their S&D. Actually, we weren't concerned. You thought curious. it was going to be good. I'm yeah, curious. yeah, yeah. curious. Yeah, yeah. Better, but yeah, they, they beat the, the Frosted Tip squad, so... Solid 2-0 start. We expected nothing less. The question is, can they close it down in CTF? And honestly, that 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 is a question because the the one map CTF uh, for Tainted Minds that won was on Forest, and that's Optic's only loss so far. Well, good thing for Optic, you're up 2-0, so you kind of have a game to play with right now. Work on a CTF, which hasn't been part of your core, maybe map set throughout the course of this. But guys, we'll be right back after this quick break.
Welcome back. Optic Gaming up 2-0 over Tainted Minds. Uh, really, it was a close hard point and a close search to destroy until Optic started to kind of take over in the second half of that of that search, string together some rounds. But now it's going to come down to a CTF in which uh, you said Optic might not be the most comfortable, Chance. Well, might not be the most comfortable. Uh, Nameless was making the point on the desk that, like, for CTF, for whatever reason, because I think conceptually it doesn't make much sense, but Optic hasn't been great at for CTF all year. Of course, they have two new players. But again, uh, this was their one map loss to Unilad, and you can already see Swifty has the flag. There's clean four down. One player's on the chase. That's Crim6. But even if he gets this kill, which he doesn't, someone would have been there to pick up the flag. So. Talk about the struggles. <laughs> Potentially there. Tana uh, Mines up 1-0. It took uh, 30 seconds to show those struggles. So good call, Chance. And we'll see if Optic can bounce back. But the pressure early here from Tana Mines. Nimble still in a position, but Skump's got the edge. And, and I think it's like an awareness thing. Because literally that entire flag out from Swifty was, I'm going to run all the way up like that bottom lane. Get one gunfight after I pull the flag that the player doesn't even turn around, which granted methods is taking gunfight and you just score. If you watch like LG, they, they always have a player, normally it's JCAP, that in that situation, after you get the kills mid map, you turn to watch that flank if you don't have the lane covered. But yeah, uh, a terrible opening break or the best one from Tana Mines, whichever way you want to look at it. And uh, they're trying to continue it. Uh, once again, clean four down. Tana Mines, all map control. You got Nimble. He's going through the same lane, but you have every lane covered right now for Tana Mines. They just need to get one wave of kills and they'll be good to go. Optic down 0-1 early, fighting off the back foot here from Spawn. Let's kick it to an Astro Gaming listening with Optic. We gotta kill this guy. We gotta kill this guy. Oh, he killed him. Tank, one shot. One shot. One shot. One shot. Outer, outer, outer. Right side. One more. Yeah, right there, right there. They come back. Give me a second. Give me a second. Yeah, he went to the fire. No, I'm hitting no E. Everyone play D. Play D. I got window. Play my life, guys. I'm gonna help you side bunker. Let's fire, fire, fire. I'll challenge you, I'll it challenge you. I'm gonna fly grab, I got him at their base. Nice. nice. One's that place, fire, because of fire. Cabin wall, cabin wall, back to ice. Firely, one shot, firely, one shot, firely, one shot. I got it out, I got it out, I got it out. Ice the fourth, ice the fourth. Or cabin wall. I need a fourth, I need a fourth, I need a fourth. Dead, dead, dead. Good fucking play, Seth. Yeah, I'm blocking cabin. I should be cabin. I just want to snort kill. I have your fourth, I have your fourth. I'm top second, I'm top second. Seth, good fucking play, bro. Let's go, bro. Brochetti one shot, Brochetti one shot. Broken dead, broken dead, broken dead. Yo, hit the set, hit the set. On flag, on flag, 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 Tied up at one to one, and another pull coming in here quickly from Octane Chance. Yeah, very fast. Scum basically just wins one gunfight 10 minutes ago, pulls the flag, and that was the opening play. And once again, that bottom lane has been the key. Every flag that's come in, it's not that it's been open every single time, but at least that's where the gunfights are won. Crim6 is going to earn some streaks as well. Uh, so valid team kill, just 15 off the fighter pilot. And if you've ever played on Forest, if the other team has a fighter pilot, your life sucks because it's just it's free kills. Nice job there from Krim. Full streaks picked up. Great job bouncing back here from Optic Gaming. And we'll see as Krim starts to move on forward. I like this. Patient play from him. Takes a second gunfight. There's one more just spawned in the back. He might get tagged up. He will get dropped on the other end. Skump's able to win a gunfight, though, in Ruins. They have to deal with one applying pressure here on the other end from Nimble. Method's hunting for him, hasn't been able to spot him yet, but now he's gonna know where he is. Peeks through the window, able to take the gunfight before dropping. And, and you can already tell, like, Swifty, that man's rocking mountain. I think Swiftazor's also had it, and it's a situation where Krim has full streaks. They have to use mountain. Uh, again, the fighter pilot is way too powerful. The glide bomb, even in CTF, can do enough damage that you have to make sure you have mountain on. But that means until Krim6 calls in those streaks, nades are going to ruin their lives. Stuns are going to ruin their lives, or at least one of them, because you can still have hunker instincts. But you're going to have problems for you until those streaks get called in. And again, it's a small advantage, but a noticeable one. But Tain and Mine still pouring on a little bit of pressure, but they're going to need to burn these streaks in this round. Octane doing what he can on defense. Two players now spawning Bell for Optic. Gaming one wrapping back, one overextending. It'll be Skump on the overextension to try and make a play. He's going to get a touch on the other end. But for Tana Mines, it's Swifty that has it out. Skump, the player that wrapped back, trying to, or sorry, Methods, the player that wrapped back, trying to find any kind of positioning. But it's going to be a streak now called in from Crim6. Gets him right as he gets into cabin. So that's going to be down. Should be able to get picked up on the other end by, I believe, Nimble that's coming off a of spawn. But Nimble's going to be the last man up. They'll now be on the hunt. Look at the position Octane got to. Yeah, Crim6 here should just call in another streak. That means Octane should be able to get the perfect positioning. You hear the fighter pilot come in. All those players are going to be trapped in cabin, so he can't call out exactly where they are. But obviously, generally speaking, they're going to be in cabin. But Swift of Azores, uh, he wins the huge gunfight against Octane. So you keep the stalemate, and you've burned two streaks. 
can they get one more on the board? Krim. Sorry, Nench forward takes the gunfight. Nice shots from him. Nimble still inside a cabinet. He's going to wait on some help to come in here from Octane on the other side of Cave. Krim still inching forward. Just pre-aiming that back ramp. Octane now in a position to help. Nice shots there from Octane. They should be able to isolate Swifty too. I think he's in a gunfight with Methods on the other end right now as well. Swifty somehow peeks out and gives him a kill. I, I thought Methods would have called that out. But he's able to shoot Krim in the back, and now it's Octane with the pressure. Two on two here at the flag, looking for the return. Nimble's already been tagged up. A grenade comes in from Swift, or is able to take him out. Methods can't get away with his life, and that'll basically reset the extra time right now. And, and this is huge for Tana Mines. Again, they've burned two streaks. They don't even go down an extra flag. Swifty, though, is going to get taken down. So uh, almost certainly uh, this is going to be just at the end of the half, a 2-1 lead for Opti Gaming. I will say, again, it's a small thing. I think all the players for Tain and Mine should have already switched away from Mountain, back to Armored or whatever else they were running off the rip, just because the only streak Crim6 has, you don't get the red. It's just an artillery. It's just placed on the map. It's just an AOE thing. But maybe an opportunity for attack at the end. But no, Opti Gaming, surprisingly so, uh, based on the way that the opening rip happened. But they're up 2-1. Up 2-1. And like you said, Tain and Mine score in the opening 30 seconds of that first half. But they fight from behind quickly and take control of this game three, and now in position to end it in a 3-0 fashion. I think the expectation for everyone coming into this series was an Optic Gaming 3-0. We're five minutes away from just that. Down but not out, though. Uh, it's only an artillery at the disposal for Crim6 and Tain and Mines, at least off the rip. They have shown some... Uh uh, success, right? And they're sniping, which Clayster's done this, and I will say, Clayster, every single time I've seen him do it, he does get a kill, but he only ever gets one, and then after that, it, like, you just have a pistol in the back pocket. So I think there's something to it, but I don't think it's worthwhile, and especially not if you're Australian. Let's see what they can do in the back. Nimble. Just trying to hold the edge, but Octane is inside. Two players from Optic then find a couple of kills. Nimble's going to be the only one here to do anything. And Methods with two, able to pick it up. Everyone dead and coming off spawn for Tatum Mines. Two of pop, but shouldn't be able to get there in time for the angle. The flag is out. Methods is home free. And Methods is very close to streaks in the opening 60 seconds of the second half. And at the tippy top of the list of things you should not be doing when you're owing is inspecting your pistol. Have your gun out. Be prepared for a gunfight. Like, even if you think that Optic is going to leave the lane open, there's no reason to just run around and inspect your weapon like in the opponent's base. Like, yes, Optic almost certainly was going to come out on top of that anyway, and it, it's a 50-50 in the gunfight. But, again, no reason for it. But now you see the artillery got called in. Methods is going to earn some streaks. At the very least, the Glide Bomb. They'll have the 4-1 lead. And, yeah, uh, what is it now? Three minutes and 36 seconds left in this game. And Optic taking over this one. Octane tries to push out through Cabin Cup, but runs into the force of Tana Mines. It's now getting in position to make a play. You've got a couple down from Optic. They invest the Glide Bomb here to try and hold on defense. Smart play there from Methods, but there's still three players hot from Tainted Mines. They found a couple of kills. Good chance here. Octane and Methods deep with ARs, and they continue to find kills. That is why this side of the map defensively so scary. Octane with all three by himself just shuts down the remaining push from Tainted Mines. And that's just a dagger, uh, a dagger for Tainted Mines. The opportunity that they had, granted the Glide Bomb helped them out, but Octane did the rest of the work. And uh, now, I don't know, I, I guess you just bump up the stats as much as possible, a unless you still want to get faith. Do you have faith, Maven and Tainted Mines, to get at least three flags in the next three minutes? No, not okay. at all. Just making sure. The series is a 3-0 before it began. Can't talk about Frosted Tips, though. Got to focus yeah, on gotta, the gameplay, 100%. Focus. Optic. Trying to find whatever opening they can to add on to this score. Scump inside. Nice one-on-one -on -one fight win. Just look at the mini-map. The green wall surging forward. Scump next in. Nimble gets caught. There's the touch. This should be the fifth cap, but there is an overextension on the other side. You've got Swift Azor and Swifty trying to make the play. Octane just popped there. And we'll try to get in position. That's a nice kill from Krim mid-map that's going to at least provide some kind of opening here for a pinch to come in. So you've got Octane on one side. Krim going to be on the other. Octane's going to get cut down. Krim just barely able to take his one-on-one, -on -one, so the pressure will continue to be on. But look at this. Nimble just runs straight up mid-map. I don't think Skump's ready for this at all. Okay. Skump able to turn. Nimble now on spawn. 
Octane was there anyway. Even if Skump loses that gunfight, I don't think that flag would get returned. Either way, the route with the flag was good early on. Methods gets the return. Opti Gaming with the 4-1 uh, lead should make it 5-1. There's the dive. There's some more streaks. And I will say, like, you've seen it a couple times where Optic, like, leaves open a lane completely and entirely for, like, the overextension for Tainted Mines, but it really doesn't matter. Because as long as you make sure that you pull the flag, even if you're in a stalemate, Optic just has a huge advantage. Like, even a stalemate, they should just come out on top, even if they have streaks. Like, it, the game's over, Maybe There's only so many ways you can say it. Just over a minute left. Krem now at the base here of Tainted Mines. One down. Continuing to hunt forward. He's got assistance from the air. It's a fighter pilot from Methods. Return in. Score in. 6-1 with more streaks coming in. They look uh, they look pretty solid on Arden 4 CTF today. Yeah, not doing too bad. Uh, and that would be like the expectation. When you have so many good ARs on your team, you would think, right? you think Forest is a map you should just thrive on. And I guess Octane statistically didn't have the greatest. Obviously, he does not need to when you're winning by five flags. But yeah, Methods, AR player, obviously fantastic job. Prim6 had himself a hell of a game as well. And Scump is plus six. What more could you ask for, Green Wall fans? At least against Dana Mines. Seven caps on Arden Forest. Uh, you don't see very often. Glide Bomb now comes in. Nimble's going to get picked off a of spawn. Two players in position once again from Optic Gaming to play behind this streak. You still have a Glide Bomb available on one of them inside a bunker. Octane just tries to grab that and hit the cross. Scumple punish at the end, but it was a two on four kind of in that position. And it's been over for quite some time. Yeah, so any major takeaways from the entire series, though? Like, I think maybe you could say it's a point of concern from the hard point. But at the same time, the hard point was just weird. The entire game, they just never won a rotation. I, I just don't know if they're worried about it. I, I think they knew they were a superior team, and uh, they knew that if they needed to take control at any time, they'd be able to. And Optic come out with uh, what you expected they would. A 3-0 over Tainted Minds. Optic, uh, I mean, we'll see their first real test. What, probably, what, is that end of day tomorrow, right? Versus LG. I mean, Unilad, I think, in, in a certain well, capacity, true, true, at least true. for, like, a new roster getting formed. I, I, only saw some pilot, test. I only saw some highlights from that yesterday, but I heard that was very close to going to a fifth game. Yeah, it, it definitely was. The first two maps were pretty dominant, but Optic Gaming uh, tested a little bit, but obviously a very long way to go because there are a lot of killers in this division. Nice performance there from Optic Gaming. Tainted Minds play them close in map one and then get blown out 6-3 and 7-1 in the CTF. The result, a hot 3-0. And guys, we've got one more match for you tonight. It's LG Rise coming up next.
and gentlemen, welcome back to day two, week one of Division B here at the Call of Duty World League, presented by the PlayStation 4. You just saw, of course, Tainted Minds versus Optic Gaming. Optic with the 3-0 sweep, as predicted by the analysts, and probably a, a lot of other people watching at home as well. Of course, we still have uh, one final game of the evening. But before I do, want to just quickly touch on that Tainted Minds matchup, because uh, to be fair, there was moments of brilliance there from Tainted Minds. Uh, we'll specifically talk about the first half point, Revan. They kept that really close to the point where we were thinking, all right, maybe they actually take map one. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It comes down to Swifty when he gets fully streaked out and going into that final hard point over at the parking lot. He uses the artillery barrage to deny time from Optic Gaming. And then shortly after, he actually re-earns a glide bomb. And I, we were all in the back watching. I was thinking he has to use that glide bomb right away because he still has progression towards future streaks. And he could use that glide bomb not only to influence spawns, but also to earn points to get maybe another artillery or even right. work his way towards that fire pipe. But as we were saying, closest game in the series. And yeah, there were some good moments from Tain of Minds. So there's a lot for them to take away from this series. Definitely. I know Nameless, you were talking about watching VOD. I think that's definitely going to be a uh, key for Tainted Minds when you look at how this series went. Of course, a 6-3 search and a 7-1 CTFR Dennis Forest, which was a weird one, Nameless, because the first 30 seconds, Tainted Minds had the lead. I'm really thinking, okay, maybe the, maybe the Arden pick was good, but ultimately, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't yeah, the case. Uh, they got that first cap in about 30 seconds, and I'm like, okay, Tainted Minds might be able to do something here, right. but then Crim started doing Crim 6 things, Scump started doing Scump things, and the whole team was just a team effort. They got full map control, and they got about seven flags on the map, so maybe they got a little angry at me saying anything <laughs> that map, but um, that was just them just simply outslaying their opponent and just rallying flags. So yeah. It was just easy work for OpTic. Very impressive.